right, well, we have our brother here. He came all the way from Arizona. He's running on a few hours of sleep, but uh, he's going he's gonna to do well for us. I believe it. So uh, this is our first night of Bible. So let's go ahead and believe God for him as he comes up and ministers. Amen. Amen. It's good to be here, and uh, it's good to meet your pastor and his wife, hallelujah, and good to see everybody here. Thank, thank you for coming out. I know you uh, have other things to do, but tonight, nothing more important. Amen. And, you know, there's a, I read an a, 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 a article that uh, someone paid $19 million to have lunch with Warren Buffett. 19 million dollars. Warren Buffett is uh, a chairman, chief executive of uh, Berkshire Hathaway, one of the greatest investors uh, in our day. And here, someone thought it was worth 19 million dollars. If I had 19 million dollars, I don't care what Warren Buffett's doing, right? So you realize tonight, amen, that uh, there is a value in the company that you keep. And uh, the, uh, the advice that you get and the, the person that you are with. And here's a guy, $19 million, but there's nothing like, amen, having or being in the presence of God. You know, the interesting thing about the Bible, the Bible says that we can enter in boldly. That's not my good side, sister, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> I don't know if I have a good side. Anyway. Praise God. Uh, you know, the Bible says that we, can, we come into God's presence. You know, here, let, let, me, let me share with you scripture here. Psalms 8, verse uh, uh, 3. It says, When I consider your heavens and the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and what is the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory. The greatest privilege of any person here is to have an audience with God. And, you know, this is something that the ancients understood. This is something that, amen, really, amen, people understood this. Amen. And so we're going to look into the Genesis chapter 32. And we're going to, we're going to look at a, a character in the Bible who is, is absolutely amazing to me. He's one of my favorite characters. And his name is Jacob. And if you've ever read this, the story of Jacob, amen, his life started, amen, in a conflict, amen, with his brother, right? And uh, he, uh, he, 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 as a matter of fact, when he was born, uh, they named him Jacob because Jacob means supplanter. And, and it, it's like calling somebody a used car salesman, you know, insurance salesman, or, uh, amen, this guy is a scammer, and, and this is... What you and I realize, he lived up to his name. Jacob, uh, uh, he, uh, he deceived his brother. He lied, he cheated, he, he did all sorts of things uh, to, get the blessing, to get the blessing of God. Isn't that kind of strange anyway, that you're going to cheat to get God's blessing? But uh, you realize, amen, that Jacob was, was everything that, that uh, he was named. And you realize that God, amen... Uh, uh, what's so cool about this is that God chose him. God chose him to be, amen, Jacob, part of the heritage. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And, and, and what's amazing is, is he's the most honorary guy in the Old Testament. He was, a, he was a card shark. He was a mechanic. He was the guy that you can't trust. He's the guy that, that goes from one... Uh, you know, uh, drama of, of, of ruining uh, his reputation there at his father's house. His brother, what? Swears to kill him. Next time I see you, amen, you're, a, you're dead me. So he runs off. He runs off to his Uncle Laban. It turns out that Uncle Laban was quite the shyster too, right? I mean, these guys are real Jews, amen. And they're, they're, they're playing games and they're talking about spotted sheep and, and all, they're doing their, their, their thing. And you realize, amen, everybody in the story, and, and Jacob was the king of, of, uh, of, of being, amen, just a, a rotten guy. And uh, I don't know if everybody has a friend like that, but 
I mean, I've had, I've had my share of friends that I can't trust them as far as I can throw them, right? And uh, this is Jacob. And, and the cool thing I like about it is that God chose this guy on purpose. It's not like he didn't know. Oh, I didn't know what I was getting into. God chose him on purpose. And I think uh, maybe God has the same kind of sense I don't know if it's a sense of humor. <laughs> but the same kind of sense about us, you know what? Uh, amen. And you may not be the best. You may not be the, uh, the hottest ticket in town. You may not be the smartest person. But God, God chooses us. Right? God, God chooses us. And my Bible says that he, he, he places you in church where you belong, where it pleases Him. God, amen. And the Bible says that not only does God choose you, but He has a plan for your life. Right? Jeremiah 29, I know my thoughts towards you. I know, amen, my purpose is for you. Amen, my thoughts are good, not for evil, but for an intended place. He tells Jeremiah, I knew you when before you were in your mother's womb. And I have ordained you, amen, to tear down and to build up and to prophesy. But you, you and I realize tonight that God, amen, is dealing with you. And God, He wants to deal with you. And you know, I, I don't know, I remember a, a girl in my church, one of my churches, I've had like seven. So I remember this lady coming to me and she says, you know what, Pastor, you're always talking about God dealing with you. God never deals with me. <laughs> and I'm like, really? Seriously? God never deals with me? God's never spoken to me. And I began to realize, amen, God wants to deal with you, but you're going to have to get involved. And the Bible says in Genesis chapter 32, verse 1 and 2, Jacob went on his way. Jacob was going back to his father's house. The reason why? He had burned all of his bridges. He had gotten in trouble with his, his, his father-in-law. He's gotten, he's gotten in trouble with his wife's uh, uh, brothers. And so now he's not the most favorite guy in the land. And so the pressure was building. The Bible says they were starting to uh, have conflict and fight. And, and Jacob, amen, realized that I don't know where to go. So God dealt with his heart. God began to say, you know, go back to your father's house. Go back, uh, amen. And uh, uh, now where he's at is a very sticky place as he goes on his way. He's going back to his father's house. Now you got to remember... His father's house, that's where his brother is. The one that wants to kill him. And he's played all these games all of these years. Amen. And so here he is, he's going back. Now listen to this. In Genesis 32, verse 1 and 2, Jacob went on his way, and check this out. And the angels of God met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, This is God's camp. Now, when you got angels greeting you, I mean, the logical uh, explanation is, is this is God's camp, right? Oh, God's here. I don't know if you ever come into church and you walk in the door and you're like, you just sense something. God is here. You know what I mean? And Jacob came and he knew something. He knew something. He knew that this is where God had something. He was meeting him here. He wasn't home yet. He was on his way home. And, and the Bible says he did it. Now, now check out what he does. He says, this is God's camp. So he called the name of that place Mahanam, which means two camps. What in the world? But this is so similar to what you and I will do. Because whenever, amen, uh, what, what God was doing was God was coming and he was going to visit this man. The angels were waiting for him. He's aware, amen, that God is in this place. Uh, and so he, he makes two camps. Now listen to me. You, you read this chapter and you begin to realize that uh, Jacob had two wives. One of them that he loved very much. She was beautiful. Another <coughs> one, she had nice eyes. <laughs> but you get the sense that he's, he doesn't prefer her. But what he does is he makes two camps. He makes one camp with the ugly wife. And he makes another camp with a pretty wife. And he puts the ugly wife and, and all these people in front so that if, uh, if his brother comes and attacks, uh, he can make a way out. I know this sounds pretty vicious, doesn't it? 
But this is this is really what's going on in the Bible, man. And, and you, you realize that this is that what, what, what he was doing was was in his nature was second nature. And and uh, you know the Bible talks about being a hypocrite or being two faced or fork tongued. You know what I mean? And you you, you realize what what the Bible's talking about. This is exactly uh, what the character of this man was. He was a he was a player, man. He, he, he was playing games. He was playing games in what you need to realize. He was playing games with God. And God was trying to corner him. And in Genesis, uh, verse number 30, uh, uh, verse number 11 and 32, it says, Deliver me, I pray, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he come and attack me and the mother with the children. Here he is, amen, he's, he's, he's voicing his concern. This is, you begin to realize what God was doing. God was coming and he was, he was wanting uh, uh, to deal with Jacob. Uh, and he, he sends his angels, he knows, and immediately he walks into church uh, and he puts on a happy face uh, uh, when, when uh, he, he's, he's making these uh, uh, dualistic uh, things. And you realize, he made God, God was wanting to deal with him. But it's just like us, isn't it? Amen. We're, 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 we're sometimes we, we play games with God. We try, we're trying to do a shell game. We're trying to say, God, uh, let me do this, but let me do this. And you want me to do this, but I, I can't do that. You know? And you, you begin to play these games with God. I mean, church kids are, are, are perfect at this. Amen. They know the, the language. They know the songs. Uh, but at some time in our lives, you're going to have to face it up, right? We run out of time. We burn our bridges. And thank God, amen, God orchestrates this time and you realize that God was dealing. In verse number 24, Genesis 32, it says, And Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. You know what's interesting? I just think of my own life. God deals with me a lot of times when I'm alone. I remember laying in my bed as a young man, looking at the ceiling, and God began to deal with my heart. I knew I wasn't living for God. I knew if I died right then, I would go to hell. I knew that, but God was dealing with my heart. A couple of weeks later, I remember praying, and, and, and I had, I had my, my, my prayer was three things. This is a, this is a kid, amen, uh, uh, that knew he was going to hell, and uh, I, was, I would pray. I'd say, God, uh, I need a girlfriend. Right? I need a job. And my last prayer, God answered right away, and, and I said, God, I, I want to know the way. I want to know what the purpose of my life is. Two weeks later, I got saved. And, and, and you, you realize God, amen, that this is when God begins to deal with people, and God begins to deal with our hearts when we are, are not in front of our friends, when we're not uh, in front of uh, people that we're trying to impress, but we're, we're alone. We're alone with God. You know, have you ever read the story about the woman who was uh, uh, caught in a very uh, act of adultery? And the Bible says she was thrown in front of Jesus in the church, and it uses this language, thrown in the midst of them. That means Jesus and the church. And then the Pharisees came in, and, and you remember the story, they had stones in their hands, and, and Jesus uh, is there, and they're demanding, uh, the law says to stone, or what say you? And they're trying to trick Jesus, and Jesus begins to write something in the, in the, in the sand. And I, I, I would love to know what that was, you know what I mean? Vegas, 2015. <laughs> God knows what yet. And so he's writing something in the sand, and the Bible says they all got convicted in the heart, and they all left one at a time. But the curious thing that Jesus said was, or, or the Bible says, is that she was left, he was left alone with her in the midst of them. How can you be alone with someone in the midst of them, in the midst of a crowd? But that's exactly what God does in church. Is God speaks to you. There could be a hundred people in the audience. There could be a thousand people. And I've been there, man, at a conference uh, where pastors just talking to me. Or, you know what? And God, he's, he's got my number. And, and it's like I'm all alone when the altar call comes and I bow my head. I don't even care who's around me. God is dealing. He's a, we're, I'm alone with the Lord, right? 
And God says, uh, amen, to her, you know, who, where are your accusers? Neither do I. And you begin to realize he forgives her and sends her on his way. You begin to realize this is exactly what Jacob, Jacob was in, was in this crucial time in his life. Uh, all of his br bridges were burned. His, all of his relationships, uh, amen, were messed up. Uh, and here he is. He's facing, he's facing, his brother swore he was going to kill him. It's the night before he's going to meet his brother. He sends gifts. He sends food. He sends you know, all kinds of stuff to kind of soften his brother up or whatever. But he's scared. And I realized, amen, that God was dealing with him. A man wrestled with him until the break of day. So, who was this guy? Let me read what it says in verse 24 down to, to 32. And Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the break of day. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint and he wrestled, as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go. He's, this is talking about the man. He said, let me go for the day breaks. But Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? He said, Jacob. And he said, Your name is no longer shall be Jacob, but Israel. Now this is the reason why he says that. Look at For you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. And Jacob asked, saying, Tell me your name. And I, uh, I prayed. And he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And he blessed him there. So Jacob called the name of that place Peniel. Now listen to this. For I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. He's asking this guy's name. He knows full well who he is. Right? Who was this guy? I want to, I want to consider something with me. He's the same guy that deals with you when you're alone. He's the same guy, amen, that, that comes uh, when you're all alone, when you are, are pressed against the wall, when, you, uh, when, when things are falling apart, when bills are piling up, when crisis begins to happen, when, uh, you know, diagnosis from the doctor, you know, becomes real on. You, he, who, do, who is that man that wrestles, uh, amen, with Jacob? He's the same one that wrestles with you. He's, he, his voice sounds a lot maybe like yours. And this is the beauty behind what God is doing is he, he deals with our hearts. He's faithful, amen, to deal with each one of our hearts. And maybe tonight uh, you're here and you know what? God, God is dealing with your heart. And Jacob, he was a, he was a player. You know, I mean, here's a guy, he, he's, he's playing games. He's, he's, he's dividing uh, his camp. He's uh, making preparations and just in case. Uh, and he's, he's, he's doing all these uh, maneuvers, amen, because he's, he's, he's playing his game because his personality. I mean, this is, this is just who he is. Tonight, the, the reason we had revivals, the reason why, amen, we come into this place and, and we, we have you come back night after night because God wants to deal with you. He wants to wrestle with you. He wants to change our lives, amen. He wants to, you know, like Pastor was talking about, He wants to ch turn the page, uh, amen, another chapter in, in the life uh, of, of your family or this church. And God, amen, He wants to wrestle. He wants to deal with you. You ask, what does he want? What's interesting, and Jacob is wrestling, he said, that, I mean, this is God, this is, the, this is the angel, this is the man wrestling with him, and, and he says, let me go for the day breaks. The reason why this is in the scriptures, Jacob said, no. I'm not going to let you go. Because you and I need to come to grips with this. You don't have to, you don't have to deal with God. God, God. You don't have to wrestle with Him. You can say, you know what, maybe tomorrow, maybe next week, maybe some other, maybe when I'm ready. 
I believe God had dealt with Jacob time and time and time and time again. I mean, we read uh, in Genesis uh, earlier where God came down, opened the windows of heaven, uh, angels ascending and descending, and Jacob is making all these promises. Uh, so it, God has dealt with it. God has spoken with God is trying to help him, trying to, to change his character. Right? And here he is. And God said, you know, finally he came to this point. I am not going to let you go. At some point, you and I, when God's dealing with you, you're going to have to. You're going to have to say, "You know, God, I'm not going to. I'm not going to leave this place until you speak to me. I need to change." Jacob knew he was messed up, just like we know we're messed up. And he says to him, or he asks him exactly what he wanted. What is your name? You know what's interesting about this scripture and about the way God deals with us is he's asking Jacob, which means supplanter, what your name is. Now, how I many know when God asks a question, he's not looking for information, right? God already knows his name. God already knows you. He knows you in every way. He knows your habits. He knows your, what you talk about. And what, amen. The Bible says the Word of God is so powerful, it can even know the intentions of your heart, you know? He's not asking this question of Jacob because he didn't know who Jacob was. He needed Jacob to admit who he was, to come to grips with his character. You know, I had a, a church in New Mexico. They were all Hispanic. And they all had nicknames. You know? One guy was named Chapo. And he was short. One guy we called Telon. Because he was bald. Amen. Another guy, we, matter of fact, we sent him out, Pastor Gordo. Because he's fat. Amen. And so we even had a girl in the church. Uh, she was such a gossiper, we called her Voca, Which means mouth. Right? Because that's what names do. They, they identify who you are. And what God wants to know, He wants you to put to everything on the table. God wants you to simply be honest with you. Right? God, God says, Amen, I don't, I don't require sacrifice. Uh, amen, I, I'm contrite and a humble spirit. Uh, amen is what I want. It's what He told David. Amen. David said, I'll give you anything. He says, all I want is, David said, I want you to be honest. After lying, after committing adultery, after all the stuff that he did, even all God wanted, amen, was David to come up uh, and have a clean heart and all, oh, just, just, just be honest with God. And this is what God wants from all, any of us. He doesn't want us to great feats of grandeur and all this stuff, this bravery. And all. all he wants to do is, uh, is, is realize who, what is your name? Who are you? And God, amen, you know, this is, this is exactly what Jacob said. Amen, my name. You're right. I am Jacob. I am, I am a supplanter. I am a, a player. I, I, I am a gambler. I, I, you know what? I am a cheater. And God said to him, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. Israel means prince with God. For you have struggled with God and with men and with Bill. You, you're wondering, well, what was this all about? What did, what did God deal with Jacob about? I'll tell you, the Bible gives us an indication here. He was wrestling with two things. He was wrestling with his flesh, with man. He was wrestling with the, with with you know uh, the lack of uh, of integrity that he had. He was, God was dealing with him. Maybe you God was dealing with you about a man your your the, the thing your flesh and and how weak that you are and spiritually and how amen uh, how little of the word of God that you know and and maybe uh, your discipline uh, God 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 knows and and maybe I mean you know you better than me right. I had one guy tell me, you know what, you're this and you're that and you're this and you're that. And I said, oh yeah, well, you, that's only half of it. <laughs> There's a, that's a lot worse. Amen. If you knew me. See, because we know ourselves. We know. And, and Jacob was wrestling with all of, his, 
all of his inferiority. He was wrestling with all of the, the things in, in life, amen, that were, were not right. Am I a good father? Am I a good man? Am I a good dad? Am I all these things, you know what I mean? And, and, and I mean, we wrestle with ourselves. But he was always also wrestling with God. Can you imagine being Jacob? God said, I want you to be, <laughs> I want you to be a, a part of the lineage. I want you to be Jacob, uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I want you, to, there's a calling upon your life. There's a greatness, uh, amen, that I, I'm going to make you a man of God. I'm going to make you a, a patriarch, you know what I mean? Uh, there are going to be people uh, years from now that are going to look at you and they're going to speak your name and, and they're, you're going you're gonna to be honored. And, and God was wanting to raise him up just like God wants to raise you up. I don't know how many people I've talked to it uh, over the years, and they were just they're 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 just out of the world, and they're still struggling with sin, and they're and they're not married, and they're and they're they're, they're, they're dealing with their lives, and, and and you know God God has a plan. Now they're pastoring churches and sending churches out, and they're men of God, and they're powerful, they're traveling the world because we never knew, and I never knew. The potential, amen, that is sitting in front of us. God wants to use you. I don't know how. But God is able to. He is able. And this is what Jacob is, is having to deal with. Not only with his weakness, uh, the man, but he also has to deal with the God part, the calling, and the potential, and uh, the, the future of what you're going to do. <laughs> God wants to use some people in this place to build this church so that we can send men out yeah. so that we can we can be uh, send people out around the world missionaries around the world you and I amen and this is this is a story right here that's been told a hundred and hundreds of times in our fellowship amen a little town a little people amen that that, that that they began to realize they let God deal with their hearts and he says because you've wrestled with God and with men, and have prevailed. So, what did this guy want? He wanted you and I to just come to him and say, this is all, everything I have. This is it, this is me. This is who I am. Good, bad, or ugly, right? <laughs> That's all God wants is you to be honest with Him and say, you know what, I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not pulling it. I'm not being deceptive. I, I just, God, you know who I am, right? And you realize the whole point of this meeting was to change this man's character. That's why God deals with us. That's why God, amen, would bring you into a, 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 a revival because what God's going to do, amen, is he, He's going to wrestle with us this week. He's going to wrestle with us about our life, about our finances, about, uh, about our commitment. He's going to wrestle with us, uh, amen, about all the things, amen. They're, they're <laughs> actually, they're, they're innumerable, amen, because it's amazing how God can deal with so many things in one night. Your life can be changed tonight if you refuse to let God, amen, and let God go. Because he's dealing with people tonight. Maybe you're not even saved. I, I, I'm, I'm brand new here. I have no idea where you are in God. Maybe tonight you you're, you're, you're really are not right with God. But tonight we're going to give you an opportunity if you would come to God and say, God, I, I'm tired of being this way. I need to change. You know, it's interesting about this question. Is God knew everything about Jacob, right? Just like God knows everything about us. <laughs> I thought God, the purpose of this story is because God wanted to take a man, a loser, a scammer, and he wanted to make him into the prince with God. You know what's interesting about this? Bible says he touched the, the ankle, or the ankle, sorry. Whatever he touched, his head, the side is 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 a, is a, a, a hip there, and the Bible says he ne he never walked the same. Amen. And that's what God wants to do with you and I, where we can never walk the same. You know what's interesting too about this, and this is something I'll I'll add just because it's so awesome. I think it's cool. 
In, in, in the next chapter, the Bible says in verse number 4 of chapter 33, the sun rose and Jacob went out to meet his brother Esau. And verse 4 says, And Esau ran to meet him and embraced him, fell on his neck and kissed him, and they wept. What he feared, worst of all, what, he was back up against What he feared most of all, amen, God intervened. And it wasn't something, it turned out to be a blessing. And here, his brother that he feared, he knew, he, he said just earlier, I let God deliver me from my brother, he's going to kill me. And now, amen, his brother is weeping on his shoulder because, because when you and I obey God, when you and I let God deal with our hearts, you know what happens? God can change, amen, the, the future. God can change a curse and make it a blessing. God can change the things that you fear. Can you imagine being Abraham? Abraham, man, and, and you, you've waited your whole life to have this kid. You're a hundred and something years old, and now you're, and God says, I want you to take this kid and kill him. Are you kidding me? But you don't, you don't, you don't hear him complaining. This is why he's the father of faith. Because, amen, he, he believed God, and he went, and he was about to plunge a knife into his son's chest. But because God was able to deal and speak and he was able to change Abraham, what happened? He stopped him. And he says, you know what, Abraham? Now I know. Amen. You, you, you trust me. And he provided a sacrifice. And he says he'll always do that. See, I don't know if you've ever experience this grace that I'm talking about tonight. But there are times when you think, man, life is over. My finances are messed up. My health is going down the tubes. Everything is going wrong. And God simply, deal you answer one altar call and something changes, man. All those things begin to, I, I, I've seen it a hundred times in my life. Just, just in my life, amen, how God has just changed tragedy and, and began to perform miracles. And the things that I feared the worst of, Amen. Never came to pass. Because tonight, you and I can't let this go any longer. God's dealing with your heart. And I can say that with confidence because I've been serving God a long time. You know, I think about every, every day God deals with my heart. So, there are people here, you know what? If you wrestle with God and let God, amen, deal with your heart, just be honest with Him. He's going to change your life. I want you to bow your head tonight. Give tonight, amen. God reign in your life. I want you just to just to bow your head. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to take a moment tonight, amen, just to, to let God, amen, deal with your heart. He's wrestling with us tonight. And tonight, what God, all God wants is you to lay it on the line. Say, God, you know where I'm at. You know all of the circumstances. You know, pastor came, or if I came to you, we would have a we'd have a, a huge novel, amen, to to unravel because there's so many details, but God knows every detail already. And he's dealing with your heart, amen. And you know what? When when you just be honest with God, God is going to intervene and he's going to change your life. And you know what? There's nothing God, God could take those hard places. And he can turn things around tonight. And God's going to help you tonight. God loves you so much. He came to Jacob not to hurt him, but to bless him. And he changed his life. He, he, turned, he turned him from this cheater to one of the, the greatest men, amen, in the Old Testament. God is dealing with your heart because God wants to do that in your life. Maybe you're tired of playing games. And God is dealing with your heart. You want to come to Jesus. You want to give him your life. You want to give him your whole life. You want to say, yes, God. I'm not going to let you go. I'm not going to let the Holy Ghost. Amen. I'm not going to walk out of this place without dealing with some things. And God is dealing with God. If you lift your hand, I want to pray with you. Come to Jesus. And I thank you for that hand. God bless you. And anyone, anyone else tonight? I know there's not a bunch of people here. We're not here to embarrass you. But tonight, amen. God is just dealing with your heart. Thank God for, amen, his power. Anybody else? Tonight, you know what? There are Christians here. There are Christians here. You know what? God, God is dealing with you or that He's going to deal with you.
And he's going to begin to, to deal with, with, with issues. And tonight, the reason why the story is even in the Bible is Jacob said, you know what? I've had enough. I, I need to change. And God is dealing with you. Let's stand in this place tonight. Would you do that? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's stand. Brother, can I pray for you? Hallelujah. Amen. If God's dealing with your heart, I know uh, he raised his hand, but if you want to come, you're welcome to come while I pray. I, I just want to pray with you, okay? Let me have your hand. I want you to say this with me. I want you to say, dear Jesus, I know that I'm not right with you, but I come to you. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. God, I forsake the world, and I turn to you. I want to do your will. You know me better than I know myself. God, I, I come to you with all that I have, and I ask you to forgive my sins. Come into my heart and do a miracle for me in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Father, we love you. Father, we ask you to you. Oh, we love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Sister, do you need to do you need to give, pray a sinner's prayer? Do you need to give your life to Jesus? Amen. You do? Can I pray for you? It would be a great privilege. Pray, pray, pray with me. Say this, dear Jesus. I know I'm a sinner. Come into my heart. Change my life. I give you everything that I am. And I, I want to serve you from this day forward. In Jesus' name. I know you died for me. And I know you rose again from the dead to help me overcome sin. In Jesus' name. And I thank you for living, that I can live for you. Amen. Let's worship God. Father, we thank you. Lord, we love you. God, I pray in the name of Jesus. Travis? Travis. Travis, okay. Yeah. I wanna I wanna tell you something. I really believe that God wants to help you, but you feel like there's a there's a, something chasing you down, right? And one of these days it's gonna give you it's gonna catch you and it's gonna be a terrible day. And maybe you've even read the Bible, the book of Job, and you know, all these bad things happen to Job and he says, That which I greatly fear has come upon me, and that's what I feel about you. There's some things that you're afraid are gonna catch up to you. And tonight, I want to tell you something. When you let God have control of your life, you know what I'm saying? I'll tell you what, those things, they're going to disappear. They're going to, or you're going, to, you're going to turn around and they're not as big as they, you thought they were. They're little, they're little nothings. They came to nothing. And, and, and I want to tell you something, brother. God, amen, wants to just help you. But... He's, he, he's calling on you to, to just obey Him and say, God, what do you want me to do? You know, when I, when I got saved, I was just a kid, pretty dumb. I had no idea what I was doing. And uh, I remember the, the person who took me to church said, you know what, John, you just got to, you got to pray, you got to pray, you got to read the Bible, and you know what, and God will lead you. And I was absolutely amazed how God took, I was reading the Bible, but I didn't understand. And uh, I was just wanting to serve God. And God just, man, and life just led me. It's like step by step. And I'm going to tell you, God wants to do the same for you. And He'll break the curse of your life. All right? The Bible says you owe nothing to the world. You are no longer a debtor. But God wants to take and He wants to wash away the condemnation. All right? And I don't know what you're going through. But it's like a mountain that God will fall down. And it feels that way. Let me tell you something. It's not a mountain. God's bigger than that mountain. Okay. Can I pray for you? Yes. Father, I pray for my brother right now that you protect him. God, that you would surround him, Lord, as he goes. Father, as he comes, Lord, I pray, God, that you would deal with his heart. Lord, let his decisions be to turn towards you, God, to cut away everything in the world that causes him to stumble and fall. But I pray, God, that you would move and help him, Lord, that you rose from the dead. Oh, God, we believe that so that you can give us power over sin and unrighteousness. And, God, we want to serve you with all of our heart in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for letting me pray for you, my brother. Amen. Uh, so, are you the wife? Yeah, I am. Amen. Now, do you have kids? Yeah. Is this one? Oh, there you go. Can I pray for you as a family? Because I really believe, amen, God, God is doing something. 
in your guys' life. And I want you just to know something, even if I can be a kind of like a grandpa, because I am, it's worth it. The things that you go through, the doubts that you have in your mind, the uh, things you don't understand right now, just obey. And I will tell you, it will come out later on. God will give you understanding. You know, they say that hindsight is 2020. <laughs> and that's what I'm telling you, man. You go through, let, let this, whatever the world has to throw at you, whatever the devil has to throw at you, he can't hurt you. He can't harm you. You, you obey God. And I'll tell you what, you're going to turn around and say, you know what? I'm so glad we obeyed the Lord because, oh man, what, what, what would have happened? And I just, just stay, stay right with God and I'll tell you, He's going to help me. Okay? Father, I pray for my sister and brother. I pray for this family. Lord, that you would bless and God, that you would give them comfort, that you would be with them, Father God, that you would help them in their mind and their spirit. Lord, move and I pray, God, in Jesus' name for progress, God, that you would show your mighty hand in their life, God, that no one can describe what they're going through. No one knows their fears but they, and I pray, God, that you are able to overcome. Bring them out, God. Make them a testimony, God, even a pillar in the house of God. We thank you for what you're doing in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. You know what? Uh, pastor needs you guys, and this church needs you guys so dearly. Amen. And I'll tell you what, because of that, God is going to move. He's going to move forward. Why? Well, not only does He love you, but He loves His church. And God's going to help you. Amen. So I'll probably be praying for everybody. Maybe not tonight. But I'll be praying for everybody. If God gives me a word, amen, for you. Or maybe some kind of a word of wisdom or something. Uh, I'm open to that. And I'm believing God just to really help us. But you know what? God knows what you're going through. So... Uh, let's believe God for tomorrow, the next night, Sunday, that people will come in. Uh, you've invited your friends. Just invite them again. Amen. Tell them you'll buy them a burrito or something. <laughs> <laughs> Burritos work on the reservation in, in New Mexico. So <laughs> maybe they work up here. I don't know. But, but uh, amen. Let God, let God move. And I'll tell you something. Uh, pastor's right. God has, God has progress for us. We don't invest this kind of money. We don't invest this kind of time to just to play around. God really wants to speak to us. And so I know God is wrestling with us. Amen. And we're going we're gonna to find out God's going to do good. Pastor, why don't you come? Let's give God praise. Let's give him a clap off the Father, we thank you. Amen. God is good. So like I said, uh, every revival, I'm telling you, I've been to many of them. Uh, it, it all, everything progresses. It really does. So... And I believe that God brought you guys individually here so you could see something. And, uh, and right now, we put a little bit of a cornerstone. You're like, okay, this is real. It's real. Okay? So he's using you right now to invite people. You know, we have to bring people. We fill these seats up. We need God to help us. Uh, because God wants to speak to many, 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 many people. And you guys have family members. You have you have people that you come in contact with. I'm telling you, at Walmart, you not many people who walk across at Walmart. I know, I'm guilty, right? Yeah. One flower away from revival. That's what I always think. Yeah. And I told them, I set these seats up today, and because usually we have less than this. I said, let me never have to put these seats away. I said, I'm going to yes. make sure they're yeah. out. That's the kind of faith that I'm believing in. So uh, make sure you invite somebody, come out tomorrow. Uh, it'll be a blessing, okay? Come pray with me tomorrow, too, at 6 o'clock before service so God can intervene. We can't do this without prayer. So we're going to go in prayer. We ask God to help us as we leave. Uh, and let's go ahead and pray again. We thank you, God, for the blood. We thank you for the words that you have spoken this night, God. Uh, you will solidify your grace and your power, God. Uh, be known to our hearts, Lord God. Bring us back safely. And God, double, even triple what you're going to do tomorrow. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.